Good morning, everyone. Yeah, welcome to our Gotai service this morning. Yep. Okay, we're going to start with the ringing of the concho. So the ringing of the concho signifies the start of the service. Please sit quietly in your seat. Okay, we'll now have offering of flowers and light. Please rise for meditation and we will follow this by the chanting in Pali and English of the Vandana and Tisarana by the congregation. And the Vandana and Tisarana can be found on page 165 of the Brown Priests of the Buddha book.
Okay, please be seated. Next um, will be San Bujo by Reverend Simka. temple to celebrate the birthday of our founder Shinran Shonin was born on May 21st 1173 in the village of Hino near Kyoto. At the age of nine he entered the priesthood at Mount Hie and studied there until the age of 29. Upon leaving Mount Hie in search of the Bodhi he encountered the Dimbutsu teaching of Honen Shonin in Kyoto. Thereafter Shinran Shonin shared the Dimbutsu teachings of the primal vow of Amida Buddha to all people. It is due to the birth of the Shonin that we are able to receive the teaching that enables us to transcend the realm of birth and death. As fellow friends and followers in the Buddha Dharma, we vow to walk the great way of indebtedness and gratitude. Namo Amida Please turn to page 11. We're going to do the Sutra Shoshinge, but uh, little special directions here. So we're going to chant from page 11 through 30, and then we'll skip forward to the bottom of page 53 and 54. And this is all in the red Jodo Shinshu service book. Jesus. 
Ramanda, 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 Ramanda. Please rise for the Gatha Shinran found on page 130 in the Brown Praises of the Buddha book. Please be seated. Our Dharma talk this morning uh, for our guest speaker for our Garm Gotani service is Reverend Shigenori Makino, who was our Kailua Hunganji minister, the precursor of Windward Buddhist Temple, for many years. And also, a side note uh, Reverend Makino married Lori and I back in Wailili Hunganji back in 1985. <laughs> but Reverend Burke will do the formal introduction. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So happy to see all of you again this morning. This morning, we are very fortunate to have as our Gotange speaker, the Reverend Shigenori Makino, who you, know, you all know, most of you know, was a resident minister here for a very long time. Uh, Reverend Makino is originally from Fukuoka, Japan, and began his ministry in 1960 at the Sapporo Betsuing in Hokkaido, Japan. He received his Bachelor and Master of Arts degree in Jodo Shinshu Buddhism from Ryukoku University. He also obtained a Master of Science degree in Applied Psychology from Winona State University in Minnesota. Why did you go to Minnesota? It's so cold. <laughs> in 1964, Reverend Makino came to Hawaii and began 44 years of service to the Hompa Honganji of Hawaii Mission, serving first at Wailuku Honganji on Maui as their res resident minister and at the Hompa Honganji Mission here in Honolulu. And also, after that, Kailo Honganji and then Moilili Honganji before going back to Hompa Honganji Betsue as their chief minister. During those 44 years, Reverend Makino was very active in community service, volunteering as a counselor and chaplain for various nonprofits, and serving as, in the, as an advisory in the board of the uh, state hospital chaplaincy program, which included the Kapiolani Children's Hospital, and as a board member of Project Dana. 
Red Makino and his wife Sumir have two daughters, Megumi and Minori, and two grandchildren, Grayson and Madison. So Megumi is here today. <laughs> Red Makino, please. Good morning, everyone. Really nice to be back to Kaido Honganji. Oh, I mean, Windward Honganji now. Uh, the, uh, I can see a lot of uh, old friends and new people. Uh, really nice, with this nice temple. Uh, I feel really great. Thank you very much for inviting me. This very important service, Go Tanye. You know the Go Tanye, uh, uh, the song of Go Tanye, uh, no uta? Yami ni mayo, ware hito no. That the way. You remember? That, briefly translated, for those who having been getting lost in darkness or ignorance. Now, the way, the path for freedom, liberation is wide open now. To, in order to uphold high the torch of unhindered pure light afar, Shinran Shonin was born. So let us praise, let us celebrate the day of Shindan Shonin's birthday. That was the Gotanye thing. This is another, you know, this is the five and 849th birthday of Shindan Shonin. 849th birthday. How many of you have a birthday for your grandparents? Well, maybe great grandparents <laughs> with a 25 to 30 generation before us, Shinnan was born. Still, we are reverently and adorably we hold this service every year to say thank you. And uh, this is a celebration of his birth, not only his birthday, but for me, the day we receive this profound teaching to be liberated from the darkness of ignorance. How fortunate we are. So, Jodo, uh, Shinshu Shuka, second verse, it goes like this. Towa no yami yori sukuareshi. That song, right? Eh? It goes, being liberated from the eternal darkness of ignorance. What can we compare this happiness with anything else? Anything else? Very, very happy because we are liberated from the darkness of ignorance, which is the cause of all trouble we experience in our life. Every family has a problem, right? Anyway, so God says, let us live our best in rendering the service to the humanity. As we, while we say, Nembutsu Namo Amida Utsu. That is a Shinshu Shuka. Now we are happy. We have to share this great, profound teaching of Nembutsu. By the way, um, returning this temple, the temple is totally different from, you know, when we are <laughs> the uh, old uh, innovated house. I kind of enjoy it though. <laughs> At that time, I reminisce this, uh, although building is new, but still I reminisce lots of fond memories. One of the memories, I used to live in that corner, that house, you know, cottage. <laughs> and uh, one day, um, I was 
sipping tea with my wife, talking, and then my two daughters, I heard the boys, I mean, fighting, yelling at each other. My daughter there, <laughs> you know, they're um, fighting and uh, yelling. So I told my wife, hey, why don't you go and say, check what's, what's happening? And she said, Daddy, you always tell me to go check. Why don't you go sometime? <laughs> so I went to their room, and at the entrance, I peeped into to see what's happening. Oh, I didn't bring a jump rope, but <laughs> they're holding end of the short, about this much, short rope, each other, and this is mine! No, no, not yours! I, I got it! I, you know, that they're fighting back and forth. So I said, I, 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 I was watching, yeah? So comical, <laughs> funny. So I, uh, then younger one, today she couldn't make it, but uh, she looked at me, Dad, you know, Onechan is unfair. You know, this rope, she threw it away because it's broken in half, jump rope, yeah? Broken in half. It's pretty, you know, colored and pretty, isn't it? That? So I, I asked Onechan if I can keep it. And she said, go ahead. So I kept a long time now. She was about uh, second grade or when uh, was a fifth grade or something like that. And uh, she said, you, oh, it's okay, keep it. I have to keep it. Now she found I have, and she claimed that mine's. <laughs> so the, the, again, the, the, no, 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 you gave it to me. No, no, I didn't give it to you. This is a sentimental value I have, you know, daddy brought back from Japan and, you know, a back and forth pulling. So I'm looking and then finally I said to the younger one, Minori, do you really need it? What are you going to do it? I said, yeah, that's right. I don't need it. You can have it. <laughs> so now on I'm having that. And no, 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 it's okay. It's okay, you have it. Have it. And no, and she throw. <laughs> so jump rope right in the center. So I pick it up. I said, do you need it? You want it? How about you? So I put it in the waste basket. <laughs> it's funny, huh? Yeah, it's laughing matter this, but it could be that jump rope could be one million dollar. Could be the country somewhere to have a small portion of the country invaded, not taking the destroying the other house, precious house. Debut and killing lots of people coming from this. I'm right. This is belong to me. I. This strong grip of I centeredness. This causing a kind of problem in our life. Even a small, you know, interrelation with other people. Think about when you have a problem, when you're frustrated, when you are sad. Think about, aren't you holding tight, too tight? See? Anyway, this is the darkness of ignorance. You know, Another story I want to share. I think it was uh, 1986 or something. We had a uh, planned uh, Nembu retreat, retreat at the resort hotel in Waikiki. We invited the uh, Devan Tsuji, uh, uh, Bishop, former Bishop Tsuji, to the le uh, as a lecturer. And then, but he got sick. 
So about a week before, he called us and said, he cannot make it because the condition is bad. We are kind of frightened, you know, what are we going to do now without the lecturer? So I called uh, my good friend, Nobu Haneda, Devon, and called, Nobu, can you help us? <laughs> because, you know, the doctor, uh, Reverend uh, Suji cannot make it. Would you fill in this? He said, sure. So we were so free, uh, relieved. And the day before, I picked him up at the airport. And then he comes out. And when I, before I shake hand, he said, hey, no, what happened? His shoes, one side dark brown, one side black. <laughs> and when he, he, looked, he started to laugh and chuckle and said, that's the, that's the thing, you know? When I left Berkeley, my home, my wife said, just so you, I have to dash out, you know, for, to make it to the airplane, my wife said, Hey, no. When you come home, we get the, the luggage change, you know. So she said, "What? You didn't even tell me." And uh, what you, what kind of color you you are thinking? And green. I hate green. <laughs> he was so mad, you know. Even didn't discuss. And he said he ordered already, so he cannot change. And he was furious, no time to argue. And he was furious and enraged. He put the shoes and dashed to the airplane. He was still mad at the airport. <laughs> and the plane took off. San Francisco, port, yeah. Going up and up. And then he started to see the, you know, the, his uh, area from the small, and it become smaller and smaller. The more ascending, that house is smaller and smaller. <sighs> what how stupid I am! In that small house, we are. Uh, fighting over, we are arguing, and we are, you know, I'm so mad even to the extent I want to kill! <laughs> oh, that, that's a joke, but, and he was so serious anyway. But as the plane go up, higher and higher, he realized, not only the house so small, my mind, my heart, so tiny, cannot accept things to tolerate because I like and she like. You know, I just cannot tolerate. And so I'm fighting and there is a conflict. That's a darkness, a wilderness. As he ascended, plane going up and higher and higher, he see, the way we are, the darkness of ignorance. You know, this world is uh, um, so harsh, very difficult to live. So when you experience pain and uh, uh, difficulty in life, gradually, we create barricade, shell around us because we are so vulnerable. And getting, uh, you know, you just said this, holding I, this is mine, I did, I'm right, I, I, this is a darkness of ignorance. Around 1960, no, uh, uh, 1996, uh, uh, mission of, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 space man, Akiyama, 
Mori Akiyama, Mamoru Akiyama went up to space, yeah? Moon. First thing he said, there are no border in Earth from the skies, from the space. We are so tiny and limited life even. Yet we are fighting unnecessary, totally irrelevant things. And we hurt because of small criticism. But once you are open up this, you go see the open up this, uh, be able to liberate from this uh, uh, shell, darkness of ignorance, we are able to, you know, this is a clinging as an eye, just like this, this kind of uh, creating uh, a round. You know, the uh, turtle, turtle or snail, when uh, some threat comes, right away pulls your head into the shell. But the man is creating shell, never come out. Make it thicker and thicker so that hardly now can see outside because of the wall. Darkness inside. Especially, most importantly, you can see yourself. Darkness of ignorance. So, um, if I have a, a talking this uh, things, whole thing, maybe you have to prepare lunch. So <laughs> I won't go into detail. But this is a great vessel. Namo Amida. This is my home of home. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Six letter of the things. You know, uh, Shina Chonin's, uh, uh, oh, I, I forgot to recite, but uh, Shina Chonin's uh, uh, first. Uh, opening of uh, Kyogyo Shinsho, introduction or preface. He said, the universal vow difficult to cross, uh, difficult to fathom, is indeed a great vessel bearing us across the ocean. The hard to live this life, all kind of unexpected trouble and difficulties we face because of dark of ignorance. Once you open, all the vast universe, everything there. But as long as we hold tight, it's a visit and hard and hostile, although you want to protect yourself, but if you want to protect yourself, you should open to receive all the help, all the source of our life we receive from. Namo means, Namo means me. Namo is limited, uh, inconsistent self. Rely on the um, Amida. Uh, something infinite, something true. You know, uh, that uh, one of the scholar, po poet scholar, Horiguchi, Daigaku Horiguchi, was made a poem at the uh, court, uh, um, 
imperial palace, every January they have a, a poem reading ceremony, Uta Kai Hajime. And uh, very eminent people or selected people gather at the imperial palace and they read that special tone. Yeah? Uh, at that, that year was, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, was a uh, theme was fish. And he wrote, he read this poem he made. Shinkaijo, hikari ni toku sungo no wa tsui ni manako ushinau to ari. Deep ocean fish who live in a deep ocean where there are no light which can reach. Finally, they lost the eyesight. The, the, I found, found the one, the kind of fish to lost the eye because living in deep ocean. We are this long time, we are living in the darkness of ignorance. We create this shell. So, Kaneko, they, Kaneko Sensei said, Nembutsu wa, the Nembutsu is a crumbling, crumbling sound of ego shell and first cry of birth of a new self. The you created, I created myself, deep darkness of ignorance inside of me. But I say, Namo Amitabutsu, complete entrust and deep humility. I say, Namo Amitabutsu. This shell crumbling down and new self come up. And, uh, so anyway, the, today, Gotai service, I, we are so happy, uh, fortunate to receive this profound teaching of Nembutsu. Um, just say that Nembutsu will be able to free from, or liberate from this ego shell so that we can live more happy, peaceful life, ego. Let it go. Amida come together, and when say Namo Amida Butsu, this hand naturally open up together. This is Namo Amida Butsu. But when you this, it's hurt each other. Darkness, ignorance, and darkness, ignorance come together. It's always conflict, division you create. When you open, Naman Davs, your hand open and come together in Nembutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Shall we say Nembutsu together? Namo Amidabutsu, Naman Davs, Naman Dav, Naman Dav, Naman Davs. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Reverend Makino. If I can tell a short story going back to when I was in high school and graduating from college, and um, Reverend Makino was such a part of my life back then. There was a promise I made to him that I really didn't keep because the promise was, I don't know if Reverend Makino remembers, but the promise was if I failed to reach my goal as being an optometrist, I would become a Buddhist minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it didn't, life turned out, I became the optometrist. <laughs> okay, anyway, next up, we have another gatha. This one, uh, on page 142 of the brown book. It's also entitled Chinran Shonen. So there's no mistake there, but it is a different gatha. So please rise. And then we'll continue to stand for the Nembutsu. And that is found on page 107, also in the praises of the Buddha book.
please be seated, everyone. It concludes our service, our Gotangi service for this year. So we would wait for announcements from Prudence. Good morning. We should say, sing happy birthday to Shinran, but that's okay. We, uh, Shinran Shonin statue has been with us for a while, but you know, he was locked up in our older, uh, on the other altar. One day I opened, I said, oh, on his birthday, he should come out so that we can see him. So, yeah, this morning I picked some poor kini kini, it was all white, and that's a white on white. So I had to go out and pick the yellow ones. So it's not the freshest ones, but at least it stands out. We have some guests today. Um, Reverend Makino's daughter, Chris, and her, uh, Megumi and her husband, Chris, are sitting there. Good morning. And Karen Fuki and her friend, he, Noko Yagi, are sitting in the back there. Karen used to come to our Ikebana class, so I know her. And I guess they've both been here before. So I asked him to come back again. And uh, Linda has her friend, Martha Tevis. She's visiting from the mainland, so welcome. So thank you, Reverend Makino. Yeah, we remember you from our old temple. It was kind of cozy, yeah? <laughs> but that's okay, this is nice too. And thank you to our volunteers for today, MC Gerald. Uh, our greeter was Bob, those of you that met him up front, and thank you, uh, Joy, for playing the piano. And of course, Ryan is always in the background recording the services so it can be posted on YouTube for those who aren't here today, and, or if you want to see this again, it'll be posted on YouTube. And Dana and her team has made refreshments today, so please uh, help yourself after this service. Uh, one announcement that I have is, we do an annual Obon visit to the Japanese cemetery in Waimanao. And I think we've done it for two years now, three maybe. And the cemetery is located on the um, Marine Corps base. And so you just can't go and visit. We have to get permission from them and you have to apply you know, in time. And apparently, according to Neil, every two years they have the what RIMPAC exercises, and it always happens during the Obon season, which is June, July, and August. So we put our request in, and you have to, you know, we have to get people's licenses and all that stuff, but anyway, they can only take a small amount of people. So what we do is we drive over, we meet them outside the gate, and then they come and they greet us, and they have one van, and how many can fit in the van is what they take, and you drive through it's obviously their training area. And then the cemetery is right about the middle of it. And the cemetery is being maintained by the Marine Corps. So it's nicely, you know, kept. And there's very old um, graves there. And there are some people that still have relatives there. So we have decided that every Obong, our temple will try to go there and provide Obong service for those there. So this year, they gave me this date, Monday, June 13, is the day that we can visit. But we are only limited to six people. <laughs> so one, of course, is going to be Reverend Bert. And so we can take five more people. So um, if anybody is interested in going, uh, we would meet here at 9.30 and carpool from here. And so I would think with that small number of people, just two cars would be more than sufficient. And then we drive over to Bellows, and we'll be there by 10, and the service is, takes about, what, 45 minutes. And we usually bring flowers that people can lay on the, the graves. So um, before you leave, if you're interested, please let me know, because I do need to turn in the names. And if you are interested, you need to provide me with uh, your driver's license and um, they say a social security number. And they also say in the instructions that uh, please make sure that the visitors bring with them their driver's license and uh, uh, original 
social security card. They don't want copies. And I'm thinking to myself, we're only going to go there for, you know, a short visit. But I think that the form they sent me, and the gentleman said, I have to follow those instructions, is for people that want to, you know, use their, I guess you can go there and camp or whatever. So anyway, I'm just trying to follow their instructions. So if you would like to go to this uh, service on Monday, June 13, meet here at 9.30, and we'll be back by 11, I'm sure. So I do need a driver's license and social security, but at least provide me a driver's license today if you can. Next week is Remembrance Sunday, so if you want to remember any family member, pets, friends, you're welcome to bring a photo of them and we can put it up on the altar and there'll be a sign-up sheet as you come in and just write down their names and then we will recognize them during the service. Any other announcements? Yes, sure. This is Linda. Yeah. So nice to see everybody. I have, thanks, Prue. I haven't been able to come every so because you know some people know I'm training for a marathon, so I don't get to have to run with Mike on Sunday morning. But I was just remembering that I was talking about t-shirts. My daughter Jenna is, make, is doing a um, service project reusing and recycling old t-shirts that people leave at the lost and found at her school. And she actually said to me, Mom, why don't you ask the temple if they have some old t-shirts that, and I happen to be definitely coming next week because I'm the MC. So if anybody has any maybe old Hong Kong t-shirts lying around from years before, Maybe they could bring them next week or whatever. So she can, she's upcycling them to make nice tote bags for the homeless, the houseless community in Waimanalo and Sand Island area. So if anybody has any t shirts, they were going to go out or donate anyway. Mahalo. Any other announcements? Yes, Reverend. I just want to give a heads up. Um, for the past few Monday mornings, we have been practicing with three people that have been uh, that have gone through the course at the uh, Buddhist Study Center, uh, the study course to be for a minister's assistant. So we have been practicing for about three Mondays now. In the we need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> in the event we don't have a minister here. So, as a result then, on the last Sunday of this month, we're going to have Dennis Toshiro lead the service. And the two others, Shirley, <laughs> not Shirley. Yeah, Shirley, Shirley. Not Shirley. Shirley doesn't no, want to. Huh? <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia and Prudence are going to support that is by sitting over on this side and I'll be over in what they call engaging <laughs> and uh, give them support. So please come, especially on the last Sunday of this month and we'll do this periodically as well, okay? They've been practicing very hard, let me tell you. You know, we've had this um, minister's assistant program held at the Buddhist Study Center for several years now. And uh, other people have attended. Uh, Joy has attended, um, Jennifer. And uh, so it was a, you don't really have to end up being uh, assistant at your temple, but you have to be, get the approval of your resident minister to attend this. And it's a very interesting course. And you learn to do sutras, you learn how to hit the kancho, you serve, they break you into groups and then each group has to conduct a service during that. It's just over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, so one serves as the MC, one does the Dharma talk, one does the sutra chanting, and we don't have a kancho, so we don't do that part. Yeah, but you learn a lot. Kancho is one of the hardest. Yes, tell me. <laughs> 
If you don't have an ear for it, it's terrible, you know. So you get really conscious of who's, you know, when people are hitting the bell. You know, there's a rhythm to it. And then, you know, I'm always off. So, but anyway. And so, as Reverend said, uh, we have to be certified by the Reverend if we are supposedly is going to be able to conduct the services in the absence of a minister. So we're hoping that others of you would like to attend this course. It's in October. It's the first weekend in October. So please let me know if you want to attend. And you don't have to, you know, conduct the services, but it's nice to know and you learn a lot about it. Okay. So Cynthia is going to hit the console on the 29th. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> anyway, and also you get very sensitive to the pitch that you chant. And I didn't realize that since this is, you know, if I chant the way I would my normal sound, he says, nobody can follow you. Even Dennis cannot follow me. He said, that's too low. Oh, that's too low. So you kind of get, you know, sensitive to all of those things. All right, before we leave to go and have refreshments, and those of you that don't want to stay and socialize, you're more than welcome to take your little goodie bag and leave, but hopefully some of you would hang around. Uh, the words of thanksgiving are found in the small red book on page 126, 126. We are very great. We are truly grateful for this wonderful food, gift of, gift of life. life. May we, we share its benefits with, with all beings. As we partake, partake of this food, let us, let us remember Amida Buddha's compassion, compassion which surrounds all people, and all, forms all forms of life. Namo Amida Buddha. Itadakimas. Oh, another thing on the 29th. Um, we have one senior student that's graduating, and it's Wyatt Fujikawa, so he will be here so we can recognize him for his graduation on the 29th. Okay, thank you.